All right. So, uh, I did record this yesterday, but it was on Atlas, and I did say I was going to let these videos cook a little bit more uh, and not just do the immediate reaction. So, let's talk about Andromeda. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the other recording was before I uh, got the Miracle Pole, so the, uh, the only slight bias is going to show from here. I am happy, but I'm not going to ignore the flaws of this character because there are some. Not nearly as many as you think, but she does have flaws for what she's supposed to do. Uh, so, base attack, it is low. There is no denying this. This is a servant that if you want to do farming and not suffer from the worst kind of refund, you're gonna wanna like grail her to like 100. The reason being is like this low attack is gonna create overkill problems just because like your hits aren't killing how they're supposed to. Uh, putting on black rail, leveling alert to level 100, all the 1k foes, all that good stuff is gonna make it so her looping when she needs to do it is fine. HP, high, very high to compensate is the reason this is as low as it is. Uh, she is supposed to be a tanky rider. And the benefits for being a tanky rider is that uh, boss caster servants specifically have like two actions if they're by themselves. Thus, he is going to take less damage no matter what her kit would be. He'd be able to output way more damage than the enemy could throw her way. And if she has other enemies on the field, hey, like it, her defensive stuff are not hit based. So it's not the biggest field. Again, leveling her to level 100 gives her a good bit more amount of HP. And then any grails and foes is just going to make it better. Any extra grails and foes, I mean. Okay, also. How is this not a summer servant? Please, please, please fucking explain how this does not come count as a summer servant. She's on the fucking beach wearing a swimsuit and yet stage two doesn't count. We have Lady Avalon. Ah, uh, hurts my brain. Uh, ba back to actually reviewing. Uh, star weight, star gen are normal rider numbers. MP charge, 0.62%. And she has good cards for what she needs them for. Arts and quick for a refund. And she does get fairly good refund. It's not amazing. But you have to consider that she is supposed to be critting on these cards. The refund for them is not going to be like inherently good at base. Like... These arts cards are not going to equal Queen Skaya's, uh, Arashkigal's, uh, King Hassan's arts cards just because he has so many cards that actually gen refund. Extra attack is looking okay. Uh, again, a low base attack and not low charge because she's a rider. Like, riders don't have the lowest star gen, but it's not great either like i think it's fourth lowest star gen so yeah extra attack if you don't upgrade this thing it's not gonna be something you can really rely on there's just too much stuff that hold it back in her base kit so i mean that's i guess that's a negative but most people are not spamming mighty chains all right, first skill. And for a tank, this one is fucking awesome. 15 star bomb, 15 stars per turn, 1000 damage cut, and a 30% battery. For a lot of servants, these are two different skills. Straight up. This would normally be like a, I want to say like five turn cooldown. And then this would be like a four or five turn yeah like four or five turn cooldown so awesome that they have these two together um 
yeah, nothing much more else to say. It helps her do her crits. It helps her not start off super slow, especially because she is someone that does not benefit that much from Ruler Scotty. Ruler Scotty wants two Buster cards too quick. This is double quick, double arts. Again, I really wish they would buff normal Scotty or release a new quick support for units like this. Mm. Otherwise, you're in the situation of like, what? Who's the actual best support? Like, you use you use Ruler Scotty be just because she uh, provides more attack and refund. Like, she does improve refund, something OG Scotty can't do. But if only one card is fully being like, you only have one card. What is 200% Buster Buster Crit gonna do when her other when her two quick cards are lacking, right? Second skill. I talked about this in the tier list that George has not had someone that like really takes his place as a tank and or esport. This is George George's first and third skill with a little something extra on top. So it is a three turn taunt to herself and gives her a one turn time three turn guts. When she takes damage, she gets a 10% battery and 10% crit damage. If she's fighting solo, this is a 30% battery every turn, especially with her MP. As long as you don't kill and the enemy is attacking, it is a 30% battery along with crit ramp up. Now this skill isn't the biggest thing, but I do think like when you can take advantage of this skill, it's going to pay dividends because she's not going to need that much. Even if she has a bad hand, like she doesn't get uh, a quicker arts card to fall off after her MP. As long as she did hit like three enemies she should have at least gotten 30 percent and then when we get to the mp it's almost guaranteed that all the enemies would hit her anyway so i think for her kit this is the kind of skill she did need there is an issue with the guts and it's not it doesn't say it's stackable with other guts i do have a little bit of an issue here if this is true it might not fully be up yet because again this character just came out but guts not stacking with other guts is a problem for a character like this third skill super solid steroid like it's part of the reason why this number is so low it's because the higher this number goes the more devastating the skill actually is in terms of damage. 30% quick, 30% arts, 30% MP damage. These two combine huge, huge jump in damage. Like most of the time you do not see like two different types of steroids like on the same skill like this. Uh, these two combined make for way more value than a 50% mana burst. As, but you have to be MP. So when I see skills like this, I think to myself, why the fuck does Karna's, why, sorry, why is Karna's still on a one turn if they can release servants to have the ship for three turns? Like, sure, anti double stacking with a uh, bitch. But now, now you're just being petty. If you're releasing servants like this, why are you holding back like the love servants like Karna? Like even further. This being on a six turn again is solid and her cooldowns are all six. What we like to see, especially for a tank, you, you do not want any of these to be like longer than they have to be. Uh, especially this, like, with uh, Atlas, you can reduce the cooldown and have almost 100% of time on this, which, again, is really what you want. But you'll also note, a, note there is 
no healing with this servant. Zero healing. When you run this character, you are going to need to like load up on healing command codes, especially if she is soloing. She has no way to get her health back up, especially after you get the guts proc. You do not want it so that when this guts procs, she dies immediately after. Because she is still taunted. They might still attack her. But I think that also has more to do is, yeah, they probably will still attack her. Passive skills, 11% quick up. Mag resist C, 15% uh, debuff resistance. On guts activate, she gets a charisma, 10% for three turns when the guts is brought. I do agree with Plushy that like her not having healing or uh, hard survivability is an issue with this because you want her to like get that low, but she isn't fully rewarded for it. Like she she's rewarded to get down to that point with this, but she's not like this isn't enough of a payoff for that. Not with the guts not being able to stack. If the guts could stack with other guts, little bit of a different story because then you could like she'd have like multiple guts at once uh but you just you just have to time this like very differently third skill if she's on water side 55 percent battery just like if she was an avenger this is situational but pretty much for any summer event she gets She's an easier looper and for quick 5% per turn can truly make the difference. Quick units are way more likely to stop short. And since there is no split charge, it's always block 50. Do you really want to use a Scotty battery to go from 96 to 100? Do you really want to do that? I didn't think so. You're going to want a pen mana loading because it lets you start from zero and do black rail looping and you are definitely going to want to unlock this event if you are uh going for higher copies over extra deck 100 percent because you're going to run into berserkers a lot it's just going to happen and getting to overkill as quickly as fucking possible on a berserker is imperative because the longer it takes to kill them the worst you get the absolute worst possible refund from them like if you have a 500k uh berserker enemy in a wave versus a 100 uh like a 10k one the 10k one is going to loop you far more gains because you're getting overkill and you might not even kill the one that has 500,000. so the gains aren't going to be good getting to overkill at kill as quickly as possible uh for something that gives you the worst refund it kind of just makes sense you're not suffering from something you can't control that, that's just my opinion on this i truly think mana loading though is what you need to go for first and this one is mostly just be sandbagging the enemies if i'm being honest np and this is why i think she works a lot better than Europa because the issue with Europa is her being even able to get back to her MP. She's not guaranteed to, and she has no reason to really like, she has the defense, she has the tankiness, but there's no reason for her to actually be doing it. Like her as a sub DPS makes a little more sense, but like not that much. This character on the other hand, very different it is clear what her role is she wants to be the one getting hit and she has the skills to tank getting hit her mp skill seals the enemy and increases her defense for one turn by 50 percent this works with the damage cut to the point you actually do not take damage you can go on youtube and watch plushy and he has uh, a couple solos where this character is literally just taking zero damage from like uh Kamazots, uh Getia. I think that's what I saw before I 
of this recording. It's six hit AOE quick. And I mean, the comparison would be high Kobo. Closest comparison, I'd say. And not only does she have uh, slightly better base gains, she also has a better card buff by landslide and more MP damage. Like, plus this res doubt happens after damage. Uh, despite Taiko Bell being like really, really good at multi core, his single car farming severely suffers because of the uh, car buff deficiency. Like, she just doesn't get enough refund. She does not have that issue. In addition, she puts defense down before damage. This is important because just like the MP damage and uh, getting this anti berserker, this is going to help her get overkill significantly easier than without it. Second, she gets uh, overkill, she gets better refund. It's easier for her to get back to the 50%. There's just so many like little things that just start adding up to make the servant better. But if you don't, if some of these things don't work, like uh, defense doesn't land, you don't have a grail, uh, the berserkers are just like too high health, her refund will really, really start to suffer and you're going to need Oberon for the comp. She can do, uh, Double Vit, uh, Triple Scotty, and uh, Double Vit Chobron. I mean, not Double Vit Chobron. Um, double Scotty Oberon. She can do both of them. And at MP1, if you're not bring, uh, bringing Oberon, if you have a high copy of uh, Summer Suzuka, she's going to get beat out. But that just uh summer suzuka at mp1 cannot do black rail he's just not doing enough uh getting enough refund and getting enough overkill at higher copies i can't really talk about it because mine haven't been uh ready to do that kind of looping yet they are now so hopefully i'll get videos on that later but yeah at the current point in time for non-welfare uh, units, Andromeda is hot dog for this chart. She is beaten out by Habitrot and Nemo Santa, but those are free guaranteed MP5s. So the damage is um, should be closer to like 190,000 at MP1. Like unironically, like actually what this number over here is. Uh, yeah but there's a lot of bells and whistles that go into this and again ruler scotty is not the best scotty for her only because she ha only has one buster card like you don't need 200 percent buster crit damage on one card over having 200 percent quick damage and getting the quick buffs on two cards my opinion by the way Her ascension mats are not the best, gallstones gall and chains, but at the same time, you can get these from the shop during the event. Uh, I, I probably am gonna get stuck on these mats, but it's fine. I have her at six already. And unfortunately I'm stuck doing case scope farming, but I'm pretty, I was pretty much already gonna be stuck doing that until I got her a pen anyway. So, eh. Oh, okay. So here we go. So when I was going through this yesterday, this is what I didn't see. Her bond is 30% MP damage and her gut CE is the one that's stackable with other guts. Okay. So now this makes a whole lot of sense. I thought it was weird that she didn't have stackable guts in her kit. And I do think it's really, really weird that they did not put this on the skill. But I mean, at least she does have a stackable guts option. 
that at the very least she does have hopefully with any kind of uh craft that's bond craft that's in changes that we get hopefully this can get more use because she wants she definitely wants the guts if you already have a bunch of aoe riders the only reason to summon for this servant is that she's cute she's like she's like super happy um and makes the person to, that this is perseus's wife the one that got compared to shinji a little weird but let's not forget rider is definitely biased against perseus there is no denying that her opinion is going to be biased we saw that with jason jason was not the complete asshole that medea led us to believe because remember she is the epitome of a woman scorned she is pretty much where that expression comes from of course she's not gonna speak good words about jason i do think she is better built than Some of the other AoE quicks, like again, Achilles needs to get looked at. Very much so. Uh, Taiko Bow probably could use a buff at this point. Unless they want to keep him to multi core, in which case, it's fine by me. But yeah, if you have a bunch of AoE riders, you don't need to go for this character. I went for her on my main, uh, or not on my main, on my ult, because the only one I had was Drake. Now I have. Andromeda and Drake. Well, my other account has like six AoE writers, including Ivan. So, yep. Yeah. I'm going to have fun with this servant. Uh, if you guys summon for her, hopefully you give her a chance. And like I said, if like damage is becoming too big of an issue, you can just grail her. It does take five grails, but if, with grail casting, that's not too big of a deal. All right, see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.